Hi, Lynette here from the Savvy Sites Administration, or The Belly, from NellieBelly.com. And today we are working with Mad Mimi accounts. Mad Mimi is an email uh, RSS feed and newsletter option uh, that we prefer over FeedBurner. FeedBurner is a menace. We uh, only have problems with FeedBurner. And so we've been encouraging people as much as possible to switch over to Mad Mimi if they've been having problems with FeedBurner just because it costs less to switch over than it does to have us fix your FeedBurner problems a lot of time. And Mad Mimi is a simpler version of, of something like MailChimp. Mad Mimi doesn't have a whole lot of options, but it's really great for those of you who have very simple sites and want to have simple newsletters and simple feeds, or those of you that aren't really that con confident in your uh, technical capabilities and that kind of stuff. A lot of times bloggers are really, really creative people and not really techy people. So if you fit into that category, Mad Mimi might be a good choice for you and might be what we set up for you because it's so simple. Uh, so what we're going to do today is I'm just going to compose a newsletter, uh, a really, not a really very good one, but I'm going to show you the different things that you can be doing in your newsletters uh, to, to make them your own, to personalize them, all that kind of stuff. So what we're going to do to start out with is we are just going to click on the big compose button on the top right hand side. By the way, this page that you see right now on the screen is where you go right after you log into Mad Mimi. Uh, I didn't show you me logging in because then you'd see my username and password and that's not good. Uh, so this is just where you get to right after you log in. So we're going to click on the big compose button, which they conveniently make incredibly large so you can't miss it. And what it's going to do is it's going to bring us into the starting place for creating our newsletter. Uh, this is not where you go for RSS feed. Um, an RSS feed looks different and uses something different and I showed you how to edit your RSS feed earlier in a different tutorial so look for that one. I have not yet shown you how to set up an RSS feed because you have to go from Mad Mini to your WordPress or Blogger site and back and forth a few different times figuring all that kind of stuff out. So I probably won't be doing a tutorial on how to set up your RSS feed initially uh, but you will, you can see how to edit that a little bit. So back to the newsletters. We're going to create a newsletter. Uh, this one we're going to title um, Awesomeness Comes Free, or at least mostly. Uh, titles for your newsletters, you want them to be something that catches people's eyes so that they look at the email and they don't automatically delete it. You definitely don't want it to be something that's obviously spammy because otherwise it, it's going to probably go into people's spam filters and they're never going to see it. So we have a title. Now it's saved so we can leave this page and keep coming back into Mad Mimi as often as we need to to add more to our newsletter and keep trying to make it the way we want it to. All right, and now one thing that's really, really great about Mad Mimi is they make it really clear and really obvious the different options. So if you look right along the top here, it gives you exactly what needs to go there. Drop a banner image here for your, from your image gallery. It needs to be 590 pixels or about that, and that's what they want. <laughs> so they say, if you don't have one, we can help. And they have a helper video and they have some inspiration options so that you can figure out from them how to do that if you don't know how. That's, that's one of the great things about Mad Mimi is they're very simple and it's very clear instructions that they really just make it easy for you to do. So this isn't actually a 590 pixel uh, option, but we're going to use it anyways because it's what we have up here. And then, so we added our, our image and it really doesn't look very good. It's really kind of crappy looking. So now that our image is up here, if you look at the top right hand corner of where you put it in, you have the option to delete the trash can or you have the option to edit the pencil. So we're going to edit. And you can take that, that banner, whatever it was, and you can link it to whatever you want to. And we're going to link it to our website because that makes the most sense. And it will probably make the most sense for you to, to simply take whatever image you're using and link it to your website. Now, one drawback is that you're not able to edit that image right here from Mad Mimi. Uh, you are able to in a MailChimp account, which is really nice, but you can't do that here. So a lot of times what I'll do, instead of putting in a banner image, is I'll scroll down, 
and I will use these different buttons to add things to the newsletter. And these are more uh, able to be edited than the banner image. So instead of using the banner image, the thing that they provide you at the top, I'm going to click on image down here and put that, that same picture into that image place. Now, if you noticed, all I did was click on the picture and drag it over, and it automatically put it in there. So it's pretty simple, it's pretty intuitive, it knows what you want. Now here, in this image section, I have the option below to either edit or add another image. We're going to choose edit today. And once again, it's the same options are, that are available to you as before, except in this one, I can add a caption if I want to about the image. So today it's going to say, this is our old logo. What do you think of it? Hopefully, you don't think it's cuter than the new one. All right, and you just click on the Save button, and you'll see that the caption goes up at the top and is in this kind of little gray text area. So that's something that you can do. Now, up at the top of that, that image setting, you can choose to drag this, you can choose to preview it, you can choose to delete it, and you can also choose the Image button. Now, what this does is it will change what you said you wanted it to be. So right now I have it as Image, but I can change it so it's image and text, so I have space over here to write something if I want to. I can return it back to image if I want, and it looks exactly the same as it was before. I can also add in a text block underneath it. Now if I add a text block underneath it, it doesn't necessarily need to stay there. Maybe I thought of something I wanted to include in the newsletter, so I wrote up a paragraph about something cool that was happening at the site, and then I realized, shoot, I don't want this at the end of the newsletter. I want this at the beginning of the newsletter because that just fits better. So what I can do is this drag button that has all the four arrows on it means that I can move this wherever I want to, and all I need to do is click and hold while I drag it. Now it won't drag above the header, so the furthest I can drag it right now is above the, the initial image. And so I'm going to do that, and you can keep adding whatever you want, how, however, many, however many items you want in your newsletter you can add. Uh, once again, with the image, I want to put in another image, I can add the plus, and I can have two images, and I can add a plus, and it will add another image. So now I have three images there. And you'll see that this little long one is, is 530px, so these other ones on the side have to get really tiny. Now, something uh, else to notice is that when you're adding multiple images, you can only delete the last image. You can't delete these first two that you put in if it's on the same line. So pay attention to that. If you have a whole bunch of images you're putting in at the same time, it might get a little complicated. Because once again, Magnini is simple. It doesn't have a whole lot of a lot of easy, different sorts of things you can do. It's straightforward. They usually want you to do image and text, image and text, text and image, and that's about it. Uh, but it's really, really good for those of you that want a simple site. So we'll pretend that this looks the way I want it, even though it doesn't at all. Uh, and then we'll go to themes. And themes is the place where I decide what I want the background to look like, what I want the font to look like. Uh, let's do dinner jacket. So the dinner jacket one is just changing uh, the background and sometimes the text to a different color. Now, if I don't like that theme, I can create my own theme. And what I can do in creating this theme is I can choose different fonts. So say the section title, I want to look different. I can pick a different font for it. I can choose a different color. I can choose a different size. And I can choose to make it centered if I want to. And then I say, OK, update. 
Now you can see that I don't have any heading text in this in this newsletter yet, so it doesn't do anything, even though I made those changes. So let's do something with the background. Notice that I went into the newly created theme, and now I'm editing things. We're going to change the background, because that's going to be an obvious change, so that you can see what it looks like. Now I'm using hex colors. If you don't know what a hex color is, uh, that's something else to learn. Hex colors are the exact shade that you have used for different things in the past usually. So if we gave you a theme and you uh, had a site design done by us, what we did is we used a certain number of different hex colors that complement each other perfectly. That's what we do, is we make sure everything that we do works together absolutely perfectly, and to do that we use a hex color. So the hex color says the exact shade. So the six zeros is black, the six Fs is white, and what we have here is, is a pink for the background. And all I have to do is say, okay, update, and it changed that for me. So you can do that as much as you want to, or as little as you want to, and it works just fine. Another thing that is possible is you can add products into your newsletter. That's just something to know. Uh, if you're watching this tutorial on the basics of using Mad Mimi, you probably aren't quite to that point yet. But if at some point you have products on your site and you are selling different things, uh, especially if you're using something like Big Commerce or e-commerce, uh, you can add products into your Mad Mimi account and then put them onto your newsletter, and they will be, they can be linked straight back to the products on your on your email. Uh, sorry, on your website. So that's a really good feature uh, that is actually pretty advanced for Mad Mimi. It's, 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 a, it's a really good feature to have. Now that I've kind of edited different things and shown you how to change a few of the, the colors and images and that kind of stuff, we're going to continue. And this doesn't have to be very complicated. After you set up your initial newsletter, you can use the same template over and over and over again, which I'm going to show you how to do, how to find your same template. So once you set up your, your fonts to be the way that you want them, once you set up your background to be the way you want, that, want it, once you set up your, your social media, all of those things, you don't have to do it again. It's automatically done for you, and all you have to do is change the pictures and change the words, and it's that simple. All right, so now we're on the second stage because I clicked Continue. And we can decide who gets this update. So I have a newsletter, and I want to include my entire audience. Now, you need to make sure that if you're doing a, a newsletter, that's a monthly newsletter, whoever you're sending it to has given you permission to send the newsletter to them. So some of you have links on your sidebar that say, sign up for a monthly newsletter, and then you decide you want to do a weekly post. Well, if the people have signed up for the monthly newsletter, that doesn't mean you can send them a weekly post because they're planning on a once a month thing, not a weekly thing. So make sure you are aware of that. What we do on ours is we say sign up for our emails. And if they sign up for our emails, that means that we can send them RSS once a day, we can send them a newsletter once a month, we can send them something once a week, we can send them whatever we want to because they've said we, we're okay getting your emails. So make sure that you're aware of that kind of wording so that somebody doesn't get in trouble for sending out what is essentially spam. So we decided to do our entire audience, and you can choose whatever it is you want to do, and then we're going to continue. And now is the part where it just says who it's from, which you can change, make sure it doesn't sound spammy, what the subject is, and all the social media stuff. And we want to put social media in here because it's great. And then we're going to save it because it's not ready. Uh, you can also choose to send it or you can choose to schedule it and set it later. So uh, I'll show you how to schedule it at a different time in a different tutorial. So hopefully this was helpful and you have a bit, little bit of a better idea of how to set up your first newsletter and it gets easier, I promise. The first one is a little hard, it's a little tricky remembering all the details, but after the first one it gets progressively easier until it's old hat. All right, have a good day.